Yeah, so no, there's been lots and lots of uh, polling around uh, the upcoming uh, general election in Britain. And this this particular one is amazing because um, the Tories are going to get fucking wiped out. And uh, the the poll that we're about to take a sort of look at the results of would see, I think it's something like 11 government ministers fall and yes. beautifully the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Yeah, which Jeremy is- Hunt. It would be the second time ever that a Chancellor of the Exchequer, would, a sitting Chancellor of the Exchequer, had been voted out at a general election. The other one being George Brown, a previous Chancellor under uh, Wilson in the 60s. Which would be amazing. I mean, that's almost unprecedented. Yeah. Incredible shit. It is almost unprecedented that we would get into this position. I think it's worth actually, I hate posting the Telegraph, but I think the Telegraph had the, they, they were the first people to publish this particular poll with some breakdowns of what's going on here. What's interesting as well, I think, about this poll that's showing, I think, the Tories on 169 seats, and it shows the Labour Party on uh, 385. In yeah. the, it's a bigger victory than Boris Johnson's in 2019. It shows mm-hmm. the Tories on almost the same number of seats they would be in 97. I've posted the article in Twitter DMs, by the way. So it shows the Tories getting absolutely completely... And this is a routing. I've described it in my stream. This will be a route of the Conservative Party with huge numbers. The entirety of the North essentially becomes a Labour constituency at this point. All, yes. of, all of the North. And so, there we go. Look, there you go. Do you read the article? Yeah. Okay, one second. So there's there's the map. Again, lucky you say that Northern Wall has been re-erected in quite a dramatic way there. Um, the thing is, yeah. not even not just the northern wall, not much the red wall amongst like the northwestern and like northwest midland seats. But also you can see a gigantic number of seats in previously a very Tory rural area of the north in yeah. uh, Cumbria and moving across yeah. the, those kind of seats between Cumbria and between the northeast, which has been a traditionally Labour area. And to be fair, still is still is a very yeah. Labour area. It didn't really fall yeah. like a bunch of the northern west, and, more than uh, uh, yeah. West Midland seats did. For, my any, for any of my Yankoids watching, you were thinking to yourself, Jesus Christ, look at that 2019. There were like four Labour seats. No, no, no. It's the same in America. Right, you know when you see the map and it's like mostly red, which means Republican right wing in America. Uh, land doesn't vote. All of the blue bits there are like countryside, nothing. Okay, yeah. the red bits, the high intensity red bits, are all like Birmingham and Cardiff and the northeast England, uh, Manchester and Newcastle, uh, where people actually live, rather than it just being fields and rich people. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we have the same urban rural divide at this point, because again, the very similar kind of demographic shift It's worth pointing out again that just like in America, a lot of the younger generations as university attendance ballooned, moved into university cities and then didn't move back because both Clinton and Blair and their accomplices in Thatcher and Reagan de-industrialized huge swathes of what you would be the Rust Belt in America, yeah. but what yeah. we would have the kind of northern manufacturing towns. And so yeah. there's no jobs left for anyone growing up there. So they moved to University City, which is already yeah. very Labour affiliated yeah. in terms of vote share, and just make it more Labour whilst allowing these rural constituencies that used to be Labour strongholds to go more blue. And had the Tories not screwed things up by having Liz Truss as leader and failing on the economy for however long that they have been failing on the economy those yeah. seats were trending more blue over time but they've now gone back to their roots after realizing them doing part of the yeah. great noticing that you know, they can make your house price go as high as possible and that was in your material interest but the cut the whole of the country gets completely destroyed economically when you let the tories in power for too long and they've realized sure. their mistake essentially so <laughs> this like this hugely the tories would th- could theoretically have created this new situation this new normal in terms of old red wall seats voting blue it's all gone it's over they yeah. they had one one chance to cement a new political reality and they failed miserably. Uh, forgive my ignorance, but what's... A- oh, no, there's no problem with the uh, ignorance or whatever America, the colours are different here, right? So, blue is conservative, red is Labour, which in theory is supposed to be left-wing, but mm, we, if you, you watch our... Flag flying. If you watch our content, you will realise that the Keir Starmer Labour Party, sorry, the Keir Stormfront Labour Party is uh, is not that. Orange is, um, is uh, 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 loyalist terrorists from Northern Ireland, but also, in this case, the Liberal Democrats, which are centre, centre-right dickheads. So uh, yellow, centre, they're, centre, they're centre right on the economy and kind of centre left on social policy. Yeah, exactly. They're just they're wishy washy twats. Anyway, uh, the Demo- the, they they are literally the Democrats. Like they're identical yeah, in terms of policy platforms yes. to the Democrats. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, yellow in the in Scotland in the north there is the Scottish National Party, who are the most left wing of all of the sort of major parties in the UK. And then the green bits you see in Wales on the sort of left hand pokey outy bit, that's Plaid Cymru, which is uh, the Welsh nationalist slash separatist party. But again, our to, nationalism in Britain is much more post colonial nationalism, i.e., wanting to break away from England. So it's a kind of left wing progressive nationalism, which is the case with the SNP. Which, which it didn't, never used to be. It never used to be for. A very long time no, yes, no, absolutely. Were, uh, were a were known, literally known as the tartan tories for being more yeah. right wing than the tories on a lot of issues what's interesting as well is i think there's a large portion of the snp who don't actually believe that stuff like the um the the kate forbes of this world who essentially will agree in with because they realize they're in the minority in terms of anti-progressivism that they support but because the snp in some situations tactically take a position of social progressivism because they know that scotland is the most socially progressive sub-region of the uk in terms yeah. of their overall political outlook but economically and socially they're more progressive than england and yeah. northern ireland are so if, if, if you wanted scottish nationalism you literally you have to give up progressivism because you literally cannot win without it in scotland which is yeah. why as we're seeing now there is that they're losing votes to labor as we see in this poll but on top of that people who entirely vote on unionism being their foremost mm. political opinion in terms of scottish politics they've moved from tories to labor because they're basically the same party at this point anyway and mm. you might as well vote tactically for whoever you think best defeats the nationalists in the snp if that's your single metric that decides yep. how you vote in fact that in so far so that labor and conservative councillors will join together to create coalition council governments in terms of local authority to keep the SNP out. That's how strong the unionism versus nationalism dichotomy yeah. So you end up goes, in a, a yeah. very interesting situation where you have like Rangers fans having to vote for socialists and stuff in order to exactly. try and keep <laughs> try and keep the SNP out. Yeah. It's a very weird situation. So it is, they, right. it, it's a really complex political topography which cannot just be explained by yellow equals good, red equals bad, but used to be good, and blue equals bad, and orange equals be whatever. Fair. Because it's to so be fair, complex. Blue blue does always equal bad though, to be fair. It's never there are there are no good scottish tories well, the, well, the irony is is that i think you know ruth davidson is probably less regressive than Keir Starmer is that's how far things Possibly, have gone in yeah. terms of it being more right wing now but even though i hate ruth davidson anyway because she stopped jeremy corbyn being prime minister essentially it's it's yeah. but obviously now we have douglas ross who is like the, the complete garbage. scumbag absolute yeah. garbage yeah 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 mm. Yeah, but what's yeah. interesting is that this is a 14,000 person survey that yeah. YouGov have done here. It's the biggest survey of voting intention that's been done in quite a while. Yeah. And the really key interesting thing that they mention halfway through the article very specifically, mm. this doesn't include tactical voting. This is John Ooh. Uniform Swing. This has been done based on, and also uh, inter polling being done in certain areas. So they've got a, a more extensive understanding of how people vote where, as well as the uniform swing. The Conservatives are heading for an electoral wipeout on the scale of their 1997 defeat by Labour, the most authoritative opinion poll in five years has predicted. The YouGov survey of 14,000 people forecasts that the Tories will retain just 169 seats, while Labour will swing to power with 385, giving Sir Keir Starmer a 120 seat majority which is about the level that blair had in 97 wasn't it uh, it was it yeah it, uh, blair had more than 400 i believe it was which is obviously the result of scotland but there were more, than it used to be yeah there also were more seats in 1997 it's interesting is that the tories are going to on this model that they've used which is, doesn't include tactical voting they're going to have four more seats than they won in 1997 whilst uh, there being fewer seats so with tactical voting, you'd expect there'd be even more seats going against the Tories right now. So I'd imagine so, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's it, like the the outlook is already looking grim. I mean, the people reporting on this, we've already in the article, yeah. We've already seen, with in terms of tactical voting, the the majorities that have been turned over in by elections. Now, of course, by elections aren't necessarily indicative of general elections. It's a very different situation. But in terms of the number of people who are prepared to tactically vote in areas in order to just get rid of the Tory, is huge. They've overturned some of the most historically massive majorities at a couple of recent by elections that we've seen in basically in Britain's history. So the idea that um, 
that this is even remotely true uh, or this is an even remotely accurate picture of how it'll work out in reality the tourists are going to get absolutely annihilated they if could be looking stay at like they are. yeah absolutely. yeah exactly well, and they're just getting worse and worse not only can i not see them turning it around i can't see them even making the situation not much worse that's oh, why the longer, the longer they it, stick it, around the more incompetent they look it, it's awful it's just getting worse and worse and worse um and so ultimately with with tactical voting thrown in they could be looking genuinely at not getting to triple figures i think that's, that's not very impossible. much potentially on the cards like that it's worth pointing out that whilst tactical voting has always kind of been a thing it's never actually really shown a big dynamic difference historically in terms of the way people vote in uk general elections the the problem that we have now is obviously the tories not only are incredibly incompetent and ridden with scandal and destroyed the economy but as well as losing support in terms of ideology where people lie as the population ages and certain parts of the historic demographic electorate have started to let's say leave the electorate to put it in a nice way what this means, we've got to the point where the rate to which the hatred of this government is driving the way people vote, because Labour are offering nothing and the polling shows that people actually don't know what Labour stand for and just voting to get the Conservatives out at this point, means that people are far, far, far more likely to tactically vote than they ever have done. It's going to be a huge part of the next election, really and truly. So it's going to be really interesting to see how people will look at their own certain areas. And I would always say, don't go to the, don't go to the tactical voting websites. They never really know what's going on. And they use like simpler models in terms of previous votes no, and new votes there, whereas there's, there's no there's one surefire way just assume the lib dems can only win here it's only the lib dems that can win doesn't matter it doesn't matter previous results the lib you have to vote the lib dems they can win here honest there are plenty of seats which tactical voting websites will tell you to vote lib dem because they were like the previous like people who came somewhere close to second which isn't actually true in the long run lots of those conservative votes are just going over to labor which means labor with a real opposition there if you wanted to tactically vote i don't think you should tactically vote i think you should vote for the green party whatever seat that you live in unless it's like an scg seat i think you should vote for the green party because I believe tactical voting just means that you just get something that you don't want all the time. But even if you do want to tactically vote and you were somebody who was going to anyway, you shouldn't use the website. Look at the polling in your area. Talk to people that you know. Understand what the current voting demographic looks like, not what was happening in 2019, because it's going to be completely different. Everything's going to change. Any previous result in your area will not determine what's happening in the next vote. Look at the polling and see what what, what you think the likely second place candidate is going to be. Or there's, oh, yeah. also this, there's, also, there's also this primary system that's been set up in this Southwest Sea, where they were going to have a local champion based upon a hustings, where they democratically select whoever they think they're going to vote for to uh, challenge the Tories. There's loads of things that you can do, but just going to a tactically voting website and then telling, doing what they tell you to do, I really don't advise it. Yeah. And Matt Links is right, right in chat that there is indeed a demographic of Labour millennial voters being turned off Labour and driven towards the Greens. I mean, look at Carla Denyer in Bristol Central. Um, yes, indeed. These areas, there's going to be a really big increase. So there'll be, you'll see increases in the, in the Greens vote in, mo in lots of cities. So you'll see increase in the Greens vote in London because there's a big Muslim population based upon the difference in position on Gaza. In places like... I mean, Birmingham... Um, I would imagine as well. Newcastle is a good place to look at, and so Liverpool as well. Because people forget that, you know, we're not quite the Fox News 100% Muslim, but we are about 20% Muslim. Um, yeah, I mean, there was uh, literally yeah. a regard, candidate... Regard, uh, slash Yemen, slash God knows where else we're going to bomb yeah. from now. So, there, for election. example, there's, there's a Palestinian local champion standing in Ilford North to challenge West Streeting, where 30% of his constituency is Muslim. So, oh, I mean, no. I don't think that it will work. I, don't, I think he'll still win his seat. I mean, ironically, West Streeting had a tiny majority in 2015, which got mm. increased to like 20% in 2017 under Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, and well, actually, it doesn't even matter if it makes the difference of getting unseating a person. The fact that they feel that threat in the same way that UKIP didn't get anyone elected, but they pushed the Tory party further and further right. If we can show you can't just get away with supporting genocide, they might actually make them, when they're in government, think twice about supporting genocide. Do you see what I mean? We can try and hope for you to drag the general tenor of the Labour Party in a more progressive direction. Exactly. Oh, That's why you say you should vote for the Greens, whichever constituency they're in. They are definitely indeed. going to win the election. You do not need a tactical vote because Labour are literally guaranteed to win. I've talked at length in other videos about why the Tories can't win and basically all boils down to nothing that the Conservatives believe in can fix the problems that they've created. You need to have a left wing approach they, to their problems, yeah. Because they, the problems have been created by the very things they believe in in the first place. For me, what summed up perfectly 
the bullshit behind the Boris Johnson thing, but the bullshit in general with the Tories is when they won those red wall seats and he said, uh, many people voted for us for the first time in these seats. And that's true. Many of them, they're for generations, their families had never voted Tory. They were despised. The Tories were absolutely despised in those regions of the North and rightly so. Um, and they put their faith in Boris Johnson because he offered a more economically, uh, no, not socialist, but certainly a more... Redistributive, interventionist. Yeah, more, more interventionist, less Tory, frankly, uh, manifesto. And yes, so they it was went a combination of three things, yeah. He it said he hoped, the, the, hoped yeah. to... Uh, to, uh, to um, to uh, put the, the trust that they'd shown in him and in his sort of plan for the country would be repaid, that he would repay that investment. And like you say, that was an opportunity for them to build a new political paradigm in Britain. Right, a complete reshifting of the focus of it, and they threw it away completely. Brexit and their yeah. belief in Brexit in the north, because they were historically opposed to that. That you think about the Harold Wilsons of the re of the of the past, not of recent past, the Harold Wilsons' position in opposition to thing like the um yeah. the uh, the uh, Europe, the common markets and things like that. Well, people That's forget, been... but Margaret Thatcher that campaigned vociferously for us to join that in the seventies. Yep. one of the biggest champions, one of the reasons she became Tory leader, indeed, was her uh, championing of that. And people forget mm. Tony Benn campaigned the exact opposite way. We had a complete flip reverse, 180 degrees over the course mm. of 30 years on that one. It's a magic. Very, very true. It's very, very true. But the second thing, as you pointed out, was this desire for more interventionism, desire for more redistributism to, from the south to the north, regional redistribution in terms of maybe not rich to poor, but at least richer areas to poorer areas in terms of the north being left behind by previous conservative yeah. governments, which he promised to do with his levelling up that never obviously materialised because it was always a lie because he's a Tory and they always lie. And the third one was that Boris Johnson didn't seem like the average Westminster politician. I know that might be really kind of shallow analysis of this but i think that him being a bit of a bozo actually helped well, him that, in these constituencies there's a reason that that character he, he carried on with it because it did work he seemed yeah. much more weird but also human on that basis like we one of the critiques we have of people like rishi sunak and like uh, uh sir keith uh, starmer is that they're robotic they're lizard alien people pretending to be human. They're not real people. Whereas Boris Johnson, it's a cultured, uh, uh, purposely uh, uh, cultured uh, uh, character that he's doing with his weird hair and his stupid mannerisms and all the rest of it. But that seems to make him look like a human being. He's not boring. He's not. Uh, he doesn't look like he's doing PR speak bullshit. And that's something yes. that people can jive with in an era of just dickhead in a suit after dickhead in a suit after dickhead in a suit. Mm. Mm, yeah, yeah. I mean, Johnson embodying, as Michael Gunn points out, the anti-elite vote in the way, the way, same way that Brexit did, because Brexit yeah. was being championed against people like Cameron. And every red wall seat won from Labour by Boris Johnson in 2019 will be lost. Again, they, they, he said, uh, we hope to repay your investment in us, and they didn't. They lost. Exactly. They had one chance. They had one chance yeah. to create a new political zeitgeist, yeah. and they have not just thrown it in the bin, they've also set the bin on fire and sent it in a submersible to the Titanic. <laughs> Although, ironically, that would put out the fire because it'd be water. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the poll indicates, and the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, will be one of 11 cabinet ministers to lose their seats. That will be good because we don't have enough Portillo moments from 97. I mean, that's going to be... I mean, the be is, you can't even call them it. Portillo moments anymore because there'll be so many of them, you'll have forgotten how many of them there were. True, but it, I it's going to be it's going to be kind of unremarkable in like just how many there's going to be. I do want to see wankers, Jeremy Hunt included, looking sad in on on the stage of a sports hall in rural Yorkshire at three in the morning. I need that injected into my fucking veins now. Okay, I need it. The Tories will win uh, 196 fewer seats than in 2019, more than the uh, 178 Sir John Major lost in 1997. It'll be the, uh, it'll the, be the biggest. It'll be the biggest loss in seats since 1906. The, the poll exposes the huge influence that Reform UK is set to have on the election result. The right wing party, uh, as it, uh, you can tell, this is the Telegraph because it's not really that as such. The right-wing party would not win any seats, but support for it would be the decisive factor in 96 Tory losses. The, so, okay, so that, hang on. So, 
they would still have over 100 Tory losses regardless, even without that. So, anyway, right. uh, the difference between a Labour majority and a Hong Parliament. Which, See, this okay, is just, just to show you, again, that without the Farage stepping aside last time, it wouldn't have been anywhere near as bad for Labour. Well, 100%, yeah, Brexit party specifically deciding to only stand in Labour seats and not in Tory seats caused a huge number of the biggest loss in, since 1935 stuff. I mean, which again, you know, in the same way that the Conservative vote will have tanked, but Labour won't have won too many more votes than they did in 2017, for example, is going to make Keir Starmer look like a more successful leader than he was in the same way that Boris Johnson looked more successful than he was in 2019 as well. See, this yeah. particular point that they're making here about Reform UK is specifically one I wanted to go to this article rather than just the regular YouGov polling, because it's worth pointing out, this was commissioned by Conservatives, including David Frost as well. Um, not the good one, the bad one. Um, not the dead in... one, the alive one. Exactly, yeah. The, in yeah. terms of the reason why they've done these polls in the way that they have done. It's not being there so that members of the public can get more information about things. It's not being done just completely contextlessly to give us more information on what's happening in the future. There's a very specific reason as to why they've done the poll in the way that they have, and it's to try and force the Conservatives right. It's specifically yeah. being framed in this, look at what Reform UK are doing, which is obviously not untrue, but being done specifically to show the difference between a Reform UK cut into the Conservative votes and all of those votes going to the Conservatives. Because Frost wants to try and force the Conservative to pivot rightwards. In fact, it explicitly states it later on in the article, saying the way the Conservatives could fix this is by pivoting further right. And it says this as a, as a statement of fact, rather than an opinion, or rather than as, as a possibility. It just says, the way the Conservatives deal with this is by pivoting further right and solving the migration crisis, etc, etc, etc. No context yeah. about cost of living, nothing about the NHS as the, in, the only metric which could decide their way of stopping Reform UK from being the spoiler for them at the next election. So I would beware that the fact that this article specifically has gone very viral, yet no one is challenging some central claims that are being made here about the reasons why the, the victory is going to be so big, because we know why the victory is going to be so big. And it's the cost of living crisis, which is the top of literally every electoral demographic, regardless of who you choose, list of priorities. Even the older generation who are the most who concerned about immigration specifically, even they put the cost of living crisis as the highest concern. The only group where immigration is higher concern than cost of living is like the richest of the rich in terms yeah. of the concern, because they have to care about the cost of living crisis because they're rich. Of course, they don't care about the cost yeah. of living crisis. And that's yeah. fundamentally why they're going to fail. Remember at the start of the segment where I talked where we talked about conservatives not being able to add conservative policy to fix failures of conservative policy. The yeah. thing that they could do to fix the cost of living crisis is by having more redistribution, having a less punitive tax system on work and a better tax system upon people who make money out of not working yeah. but that would be against conservative orthodoxy no, so it's not is... going to happen so they won't fix the problem and they'll lose yeah exactly so this article's approach to it is basically no dig upwards stupid yes it is it is and in fact all they, the the right-wing voters that they're losing to reform uk they're gone they're not coming back those birds aren't coming back regardless of whether you pass rwanda not this, they, well not in yeah. this election cycle certainly no no definitely not in this election cycle yeah they're already gone so yeah. Again, this this line that they're specifically taking is to try and influence conservative policymakers, and it's nothing to do with trying to actually save the Tories. Because what will probably happen is if they pivot further rightwards, a bunch of seats in the blue wall, which is the southwest for Americans watching, will yeah. be lost to the Lib Dems, who are just absolutely gobsmacked at the failure yeah. of the One Nation Tories capitulating to the far right, yeah. and people who have already moved to Reform UK. So loads of them don't like the Windsor framework. Loads of them think that their government cannot be reformed, and they hate Richie Sunak because they think he's a puppet of the World Economic Forum. Like, which to be fair, he's an ex Goldman Sachs banker, but it's not a conspiracy theory. He's just a capitalist. Like, get with the program, folks. So they're not coming back from Reform UK to the Tories now that they've already shifted over to this minor party. That like that's not happening unless there was somebody who's just saying so for the poll. There'll be yeah. obviously a proportion of these people who say they're going to vote reform, but will just folds to the Tories when it comes to the election, but they're already floating voters. People who've yeah. already vehemently come to Reform UK, they're not moving back. So that metric is not something that you can really change. But if you fix the cost of living crisis, somehow a lot of the Labour defectors, the previous people who would, who would vote Tory but are now voting Labour, they might theoretically come back. So even the kind of premise that Frost is trying to get with this article isn't even true. 
The result would be the biggest collapse in support for a governing party since 1906, with an 11.5% swing to Labour. It all but guarantees Sir, Keith's, Sir Keir's party, at least a decade in government, as no party with such a sizable majority has ever lost a subsequent election. Which is the point I was making yesterday. We're going to have to pull with Keith for you know a decade, basically. Mm -hmm. at, the, at the very least, who knows? I mean, Blair looked like he was guaranteed a decade, and he did get a decade, but he could have gone on for you know another two or three years. There is also bad news for the Scottish National Party, uh, which is predicted to lose almost half of its seats to Labour, retaining only 25. Uh, the poll obtained using the same method that they accurately predicted the results of recent uh, several recent elections will add to pressure on Rishi Sunak to pivot to a more conservative agenda as he faces a crucial vote on the Rwanda policy this week. Yep, yeah, taken as complete fact, not treated as an opinion or as a suggestion, literally mm. reported by the Telegraph as a statement of fact, which obviously, you know, it's the Telegraph, they're going to do it, but it's interesting that it's quite so brazen in the way they've reported it. It's Well, this is propaganda, yeah. Yes, it is probably it is ridiculous. Um, that doesn't mean that the numbers are wrong, by the way. But I'm, I'm sure I, you cover a perfectly re respectable uh, polling organization, but the way it's being interpreted is fucking ludicrous. And the timing exactly. of it, again, it's this week the Rwanda bill's coming forward, and it, it looks like uh, the, the Tory backbenchers having essentially allowed stepped aside and allowed the first reading to go through. Um, look like they might be uh, about to step up and actually do something on this one mm. and uh, and stop it. Uh, not because it's a hideous abomination, but because it's not enough of a hideous abomination, bizarrely. But either yeah. way, it looks very possible that they might lose that vote if they push it to a vote, which True. Uh, True. they'll have to. There's no like even if it brings the government down, there's no way you could pull it at this point. It's it's they've made a, a completely pointless. Uh, expensive waste of everyone's time, the totemic issue of the government, mm. and they're still going to fail. I mean, just gen incompetence and corruption on such a scale that I, I, I have never seen before, and I lived through the John Major years. Mm. It's incredible. It will also be studied closely by Tory MPs who believe a change in leader before this year's election is the only way to avoid disaster. I wonder if that's what this the person who wrote this thinks. I think so. I, I think that's what Frost was trying, trying to put across as well. In the, not just are they failing on terms of, as far as he is concerned, not being right wing enough, which I think is untrue. But nevertheless, that's his opinion. He's reasonably he's within his rights to hold it. I think he also don't like doesn't like Rishi Sunak for being not right wing enough when the guy's already incredibly right wing in terms of at least his fiscal policy as well as his social policy too. He's just not Brexity enough for these people. It's really funny just how like how again people always talk about the left purity testing. When our purity test is essentially just don't be a right winger, which is not uh, which is a hurdle that many members of the PLP find it really difficult to jump over. But mm. Tory purity testing, it just goes so much further. It just the Tory purity testing is absolutely wild in terms of I mean, the fact the, that the, Richard, the, Tice, Richard Tice described Keir yeah. Starmer and Rishi Sunak as two sides of the same socialist coin, which is very funny to me. Amazing. Yeah. Then they're going about cancel culture. How many leaders have they cancelled now? Yeah, like the true. the Tory the right wing are so nakedly pro cancel culture, pro purity testing, purity spiral madness. Who will then turn around and go, "What you don't agree with uh, Sir Keir Starmer on this one point?" <laughs> Political correctness gone mad. Writing for the Telegraph, Lord Frost, the Conservative peer, described the polls finding as stunningly awful for the party, saying it was facing a 1997 style wipeout if we are lucky. Yeah, exactly. Actually, I think it'll be worse than this. Like, not just yeah. A small amount worse. I think he'll be like catastrophically worse for them. Well, like I said, they've got them on 169 nice uh, seats, but I, I genuinely think with tactical voting put in there, they will the low hundreds. I reckon. Yeah, yeah. I think they probably will get to 100, uh, assuming again, assuming it doesn't get catastrophically worse from this point. Who knows? Um, uh, but I, I, they're going to struggle to get to 100. I think, will, I think it'll, it'll, it'll be a struggle, day, but, depending yeah. on how strong the tactical vote is and how much the reform uk vote maintains its cut into the conservatives coming up to the yeah. election and people don't yeah. abandon them for the tories tactically on their own side as well also another potential mitigating factor for all of this is the return of nigel farage now he's he, he's currently keeping his cards close to his chest and saying he has no plans to rejoin the reform uk fold 
directly currently but you know depending on what happens with potentially with rwanda this bugbear that he has as well as the right wing of the conservative party he may at some point potentially come back to frontline politics with reform uk standing in a seat becoming more actively involved in campaigning and if he does that the tories will literally get through it will be complete annihilation they might not they might not even be the official opposition if nigel farage does that that's how much i personally believe nigel yeah. farage has and terms of sway over the public considering the it's platform possible. that he has and you've got to say, I mean, they're not going to form that much of an issue, but the Lib Dems getting back up to 48 seats. I mean, it's almost as if 2010 didn't happen. It's of a smaller percentage as well. Like, Lib Dems yeah. are going to be going down in voter percentage compared yeah. to 2019 and will get more seats. I mean, because first past the post is a very stupid voting system. Yeah. He said a combination of tactical voting and any decision by Nigel Farage to return to frontline politics could leave the Tories be facing, quote, an extinction event which yep. is the point you were making. Yeah. Uh, Lord Frost added that the only way to avoid the likely defeat was, quote, as to, to be as tough as it takes on immigration, so reverse the debilitating increases in tax. No, but they've cut tax, didn't you hear? They, it was definitely a tax cut, honest. It was. Look, fiscal drag, what's that? No, it doesn't exist. And the renewables tax on energy costs and much more. Oh, we've got more seven bins bollocks coming, haven't we? <laughs> oh, yeah, 100%. Oh, no. Because again, what's stupid again is that the public support green politics. The public is massively in support of green politics. We are one of the greenest electorates in terms of what we want to see in but terms the, of policy in Europe. But the Tories are ghouls, like literal demons. Oh, also as well. Like they live in a tiny no. little bubble. He said, oh, sorry. He said the data showed the Tories were hemorrhaging uh, the votes of Leave supporters who backed them in 2019 and will be punished by those voters, quote, if they do not get tough on immigration fast. Okay, but it wasn't just immigration that they care about. Well, that's that's Tory home counties bullshit. The people of the North, the Leave voters of, of that, you know, red wall type seat. No, don't just give a fuck about immigration. They would also like some redistributive policies, if that's okay. Yeah, they wanted the 40 hospitals and the levelling up, which you've literally not delivered. At yeah. least not in any kind of substantial, meaningful form. Oh, you've given some funding so that Wigan Town Centre can upgrade its shopping centre. That's not the same as changing the massive levels of wealth inequality and income inequality between yeah. the North and the South. The poll was commissioned by a group of Conservative donors called the Conservative Britain Alliance. The CBI, brilliant, um, even though they're against collective bargaining, which is interesting, uh, and carried out by YouGov, working with Lord Frost. It surveyed 14,000 respondents over the course of New Year, around seven times as many people as a typical poll. Mr Sunak's party will lose almost every seat in the north of England, more than 70% of their seats in Yorkshire, at, at, which will just leave Rishi Sunak, won't it? There will just be Rishi Sunak left in, in Yorkshire. Um, in Richmond, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Richmond brackets Yorks, in case you forgot, there was another Richmond. And more than half their seats in the Midlands, lol. I, I, I do hope at the very least Michael Fabrican's hair will get a seat in the in the Lords. <laughs> very Not true, Fabrican, very just true. his hair. If he gets ousted, the hair has to survive, okay? One of the greatest elements of British parliamentary life. The Conservatives are also predicted to suffer heavy losses, mainly to the Liberal Democrats, in the blue wall seats of the south of England. Uh, they have held for decades. Horsham, which the Conservatives won by 21,000 votes in 2019, only been represented by a Tory since 1880, is expected to go to the Liberal Democrat. 1880! What I've just pulled up on my end, too, is the official YouGov statement on what they've put out here. Mm. And they've given us, we don't get this in the Telegraph's reporting of this, but we do get this by bringing up the actual YouGov polling. Can you guess how much percentage it gives Labour in terms of their headline voting intention from this poll that's been done here? Um, I, I don't know exactly, probably 42% or something. I mean, because that would be bigger than what Corbyn got in 2017. Yes. The headline voting intention in this poll puts Labour on 39.5%. Really? That's, that's, that's a smaller voter percentage than Corbyn won in 2017. Wow. That... How undemocratic a system do you have to have to have a party get less than 40% of the vote and yet get, what, 60% of the seats? Absolutely. Get, few, get fewer votes they got in an election six years, seven years ago and get almost 200 more seats. Oh, no, but more than 100 more seats. It's really, really wild just how much this uh, changes. They, in fact, they literally have an entire thing in their article about 
there are the official poll called Notes on the Daily Telegraph's Analysis, which I find very, very interesting that they specifically have to reject a bunch of things that the Telegraph have added as their own yeah. commentary yeah. to try and make sure that people get unbiased opinions on these outside of the Daily Telegraph's kind of yeah. narrative that they've tried to construct. Well, that's, well, exactly. That's what I mean. YouGov, I've I'm, I'm got no problem with the YouGov numbers, which I'm sure are accurate and, and fair given the, the polling that was done. It's just the, the spin they're trying to put on this is ludicrous. Yeah. It is very, there's a lot of spin. One of the main things they point to is that the Daily, Tele the Daily Telegraph trying to frame this as saying, well, Reform UK are the difference between a Labour majority and a Labour minority has been done in terms of the Telegraph's methodology of just m taking away reform and adding it all to the Tories, which is, of course, not how that works. And the idea yeah. that all Reform UK voters would go back to the Tories or wouldn't go to Labour or wouldn't go to another smaller party or wouldn't just stay at home. Just, yeah, just not vote, yeah. No. That those are all things that could potentially happen that would, and you, even a small fraction of those percentages would give Labour a majority anyway. But I think it is worth pointing out in general that Reform UK are the reason why the Tories are getting annihilated rather than just beaten. That's the main difference here. And it is also why that the Tory, that Labour can get a smaller percentage of the vote than in 2017 based upon this poll and also yeah. wipe the Tories out because the first past the post changes I would who attacks in certain yeah. key demographics based upon what smaller parties vote when. I, I mean, I know Kia is shit and doesn't deserve any votes, but I would still expect them to, to break 40%, I think. I, I assume they will as well. I don't think yeah. they're going to get fewer votes than Jeremy Corbyn did in terms of voter percentage. Maybe in mm -hmm. terms of nominal votes because the turnout will be lower. But in terms yeah, of percentages, which true. is really what matters yeah. in terms of an election, I still mm -hmm. think that they will get more. And I think the tactical voting will shift where people vote. But I think it, it will be interesting to see how pathetic the turnout is. Oh, it will be, it will be terrible. Yeah, it will be, be absolutely shocking. terrible. Because no one wants to vote for any of these parties, basically. None, I mean, well, there's some people want to vote for Green or SNP, but like if the major political party, no one really wants to vote for them. It's like, okay, which pile of shit looks less smelly and awful to eat? Like, it's literally, it, no one wants to, but the, you know, the situation might be worse type deal, which is like, how unmotivating is that to go out and actually fucking vote for them? The results are primarily driven by a collapse in the Conservative vote rather than a surge in Labour's shade. Well, that's what we've been um, saying. Well, literally, that's what we're saying. That's exactly what we've been saying. Yeah. One of the actual true bits of analysis from the, from the Telegraph on this. Yeah. Uh, the constituencies across England and Wales, the Labour vote is up by an average of just four percent compared to 2019, whereas the Conservative vote is down by an average of 18 percent. That's nearly one in five. We people amazing hate them across the country yeah. because they're terrible yeah. and they ruined the country. It's just I wish they'd have noticed when they were doing the whole ruination thing in 2010. To 2015 rather than oh, they don't care. They've a decade they've late. Squirreled, they've squirreled away millions, well, billions between them and their donors. The whole point was they wanted to enrich themselves and their friends, and they've done that very, very effectively. Yes. So the yeah. fact that they've, they've taken the most successful political party in the history of the world and shoved it down the shitter, I don't care. Hey there, if you enjoyed the video, make sure that you like and leave a comment that helps the video out in the algorithm. If you subscribe and ring the bell, it'll let you know when I go live. I stream every day on YouTube and Twitch. You can also follow all of my socials down in the description. And if you want to support me in a more financial manner, there's a join button for memberships. It's just 99p to be a member on YouTube, as well as a Patreon. And there's some merch there as well. And hopefully I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.